Starting on the uh, the rocker housing, this is a work on your own. Do as much as you can. And I'm recording the video for future reference. The uh, As always, the process that I go through, if you see something different or you take a different track, as long as we end up with the same geometry, that is the test for validity. Uh, there is no right or wrong way to go through this process. There are better ways and more efficient ways than others, uh, but that is part of the um, uh, the growing pains, the doing it 10,000 times to uh, be able to look at something and uh, come up with a plan and work through it, even if it's uh, not the, um, you know, if you find you're painting yourself into a corner, having strategies to back out and uh, salvage uh, the work that you've uh, you've done but have good strategies from the uh, the start make good decisions and work work through that process it's entirely different when you're starting with a blank slate and your imagination and just i have basic parameters i know what this should do and in the end it's all up to me to create uh, this geometry and uh, as efficiently as possible. So this um, uh, this piece has the um, the angled shape. I mentioned in the overview that I would probably box this out and cre create some um, uh, geometry to uh, to work from. And I'm looking at this from the uh, the front view being the more complicated of the shapes. I'd like to get that out of the way. So we'll probably generate this geometry. I don't think it gets, don't see anything strange. We talked a little bit about maximum material condition on the holes that when you're looking at a limit dimension, the smaller number is the most material. If we make the hole larger, it's removing more material. Uh, when we look at the uh, the pin later on, and the, um, the larger number will be the max material. If we were to remove more material, we would see it go down in diameter. We would uh, have less material to work with. So I want to generate these at their um, maximum material condition. We'll look at the, um, the clearances and the types, but really this H7S6 is the... Uh, internal external hole designation shaft designation and the um, uh, the precision that is uh, required for that geometry all right so let's get started on the creating the uh, the shape so i'll fly this out of the way and we're going to do a new part we've been doing these in metric so front plane sketch this should be pretty much habit by now so for reference, I'm going to stay with my S key this time, or at least for some of the time. Uh, I'm going to generate the box and just get a size because of the oddness of the shape. Let's see, it looks like an overall of 220. And the whole location goes through at 82. And that kind of gives me a real quick sense of where this geometry is going to fall out. So L on the keyboard puts me into line. I'll put the lower one in place. And I'm going to use those contours and regions to my advantage here so that um, I can quickly generate as much of this geometry without having to uh, go through and make everything pristine perfect. The uh, the trim tool, I think I've used it maybe two or three times this semester, if that. I haven't regularly used trim in probably five or six years. I've switched over to this process of creating this geometry and, and having these um, uh, having these shapes uh, uh, with with a little more clutter, so to speak. Let's see, what else can I use in here to, uh, to help my... Uh... So the bottom looks like 12 millimeters, so I'll go ahead and put the 12 millimeters in for reference. I think that's gonna be pretty good because that will give me enough to visualize. And then if we go straight into the circles, 
place a circle and place the circle. So remembering that that is at the top of the arc or is centering the arc for the top of the part, I still have material here to, uh, to work with. All right, so the whole location was 16. Uh, this should be a, a press fit, if I remember uh, from the, uh, the pen. We'll make those equal, so select, control, select, equal. We're going to place them. We have a dimension between the holes of 140. <clears throat> and from the edge of 20. So that gives us those shapes. And the choice is, do I put in the arcs or do I just make more circles? So if I go with the circles, I can start, and this is going to come out to the edge, and a radius of 20 is going to bring it right up to that starting point. And then we'll bring that out. So since I always want that to be tangent, I'm not going to worry too much about putting a, a diameter on that. Uh, this one has a radius of 15. So assuming that we're in an arc, uh, we'll go ahead and put the diameter at 30, but I would like to see that radial dimension. So I'm going to switch it to an R value. Right, and then we can go back into line, L on the keyboard. We'll pull that off tangent. And you kind of notice that it's going to follow, no, nope, I went back to it, I probably lost it. Um, there is a point where it picks up that tangency, there was a lot going on there, but I did see the little yellow box. And sometimes tangency, the automatic inference is good. And I just did the select, control, select, and made the, uh, the circle and the line tangent. Uh, let's see, does that come to a point? Yeah, it looks like it goes straight to the point. So picking our circle again, and that's not picking up the uh, the tangency per se, so I do want to watch that. And if I have any doubts, I'm just going to select on the line. If I don't see that tangency symbol, then we're going to go ahead and apply it. All right, so we got a lot of geometry going on here. We can um, extrude our shape, and if I wanted to, uh, clean up just a little bit. I would make this construction geometry because it is there for reference. Still kind of have this outside uh, shape going on here. So uh, let's just go ahead and see what we get for the extrude. Uh, maybe one more construction geometry. So at least uh, the, uh, the regions it kind of uh, cleans out. So let's go ahead and extrude. I have to decide do I want this to go back or towards me doesn't really uh, doesn't really matter. We have a thickness of 18 millimeters, and then our contours and regions. We're going to need to select and select and select. So one of the advantages of making those construction lines is I didn't have to go find each of those regions. Sometimes I, st I still will, but uh, it depends on the uh, the selection set. All right, so that goes into place. I'll go ahead and fly our drawing back in. So we have most of the geometry here, but notice that uh, they're given to, these dimensions are given to the, um, to the, uh, the radius, to the inside uh, fillets of the, uh, the shape. So utilizing this, uh, the second drawing, just blocking that out, not worrying about the fillets internal to the sketch. That's going to be, I think that's going to be a little more efficient. So we'll stay with that as a process. And I'm not worried about the, uh, the base just yet. So we'll go um, right click and sketch. Uh, we're starting with lines. So just do the L on the keyboard. Looking for those inferred relations, angles. If I come over and I touch that edge, I can get the parallel. And we have a vertical and then back. All right, so I pick on that. The inference line shifts. 
actually hover over it just a little bit, don't necessarily have to pick. I'm doing the left button hold down, and I want those connected, and I will just make it vertical. All right, so that gives me the shape. And we'll start adding our dimensions. Hopefully all of the relations were inferred correctly. And 20. And an overall of 175. And 50. And then 26. So I'm just working my way around the uh, the geometry, and since uh, we don't necessarily have all of those dimensions now, that moved out of relation, and that moved out of uh, relation. So let's go ahead and bring that back to 20. All right, so one more 18. And that should take care of one more 42. That looks like it takes care of our dimensions. So I picked up the inference, but since it did not imply them, we're going to go ahead and make, uh, make that parallel. Interesting that um, it doesn't have any relations. I don't see any perpendiculars. Oh, the 45 from the uh, the edge. So let's uh, hit Control Z a couple of times, and that will, since uh, we have a 45 instead of, would be interesting to see that angle. All right. So my assumptions about it being parallel not that good. This one uh, did not end up, and now I can see it in the drawing. It appears and 2.45 degrees. Well, that's a little strange, but I would think that uh, the parallelism would uh, probably be the better of the the two choices. All right. So, uh, despite all that, extrude all up to next. Except, I'm not worried about the fillets just yet. I'm getting all of my geometry blocked in. Uh, you know, with these fillets being part of the, the sketch, part of the geometry, um, you know, coming up to those vertices, that doesn't really, um, really help me much there. So included those, but any of the, uh, the sketch fillets will put in at the, um, at the last. All right, so let's uh, fly the drawing back in and lay out for the internal cutout, and we'll go back to our top geometry, so we're looking at 50, and by the full length, choices, do I include the slots in this sketch or make them separate? Let's go ahead and make them as a separate cutout. Alright, so based on the way this rotated, I am going to open up a sketch on the, uh, the bottom. Oh, I opened up a sketch on the bottom. We'll create the rectangle. Get that close, and then I can bring it back. And keep in mind, if the uh, the shaded uh, sketch contours uh, get to be a little uh, too much, we can always click on that uh, that button and turn them off. Two fifty, and if I go Control Seven, I want to make sure I want that my visual that my uh, my orientation perception is uh, is working okay, so that looks like the uh, the correct direction. I got the uh, the picture. I'll extrude. And I want to go up to vertex since the size was created there. And we'll just tie it into that geometry so that if something changes in that sketch, we're not going to end up with uh, a weird blend over here. All right, so our fillets, we can go in. Let's see, where is our call out for those guys? Let's see if we can find it on the drawing here. Well, it's shown as, uh, as nine to the center, which typically would be. 
through, but since it's not called out, you know, we'll double check it against the, uh, the drawing. So we're going to go with the fillet tool. Oh, I forgot the slots after saying all of that. <laughs> oh, no items selected, so we'll open up the sketch. Let's get the other uh, slot in there. All right, so uh, let's see. I wanted to a um, little more visual up here. The straight slot, the center point slot, and the three-point arc and the center point arc. Uh, we'll take a look at those uh, again with kind of the, the flywheel looking thing. And do the straight slot and we're going to end up with three of these so we drag the center line drag out drag the center line drag out and center line drag out all right so the two outside are the same so if i select control select i can I, whenever i see fixed i don't want to fix we want to make equal so those are going to pull up the same sizes we could do something like uh, uh, select the arcs and make those equal since our dimensions are going to be a little bit uh, skewed between the, the three slots. So 15, all right, so that one moved a little bit independently. So while I'm thinking about it, I'll go select, control, select, control, select, collinear. And I can either go to the arc or to the points. So tendency is still going to be to pick the arc because I may want to utilize that max min condition uh, to, to verify the, um, the edge of the slot to the edge of the part. And then 20 millimeters on the, the length, 60 millimeters, and that comes all the way off of the edge at 80. And then the 180. And if the slot is truly equal, then most of that's going to be fully defined. And our last dimension will be the width at 10. And that gets us to our fully defined geometry. And we can go ahead and extrude, cut, up to next or through all, as the case may be. And that gets the slots. Okay, so now we're ready for the uh, for the fillet. So S key, fillet. I haven't, uh, I don't see anything that's uh, made me change my mind about the, uh, the nine millimeter. That's kind of a weird, uh, weird size. Uh, converts over to about 354 in an in inch. So, we will go with the nine millimeter as the only uh, kind of reference ge uh, geometry there. So we have the one edge, and as soon as I pick, well, as soon as I can get around to pick another edge, there we go. I get that little pop up, and I'm looking for that selection and the pop up. You know, certainly don't want to go too crazy with it, but if we are careful and observe, we'll be able to put those in place, uh, do a partial preview or a full preview, and then go ahead and accept. So with its center, I so we'll have to kind of do more of that in the drawing, but with its center, that should be in uh, pretty good uh, pretty good shape. All right, so what am I um, looking for? The other fillet at 10, and we can just, when it pops up, put in the uh, the 10 millimeter and accept. All right, so this is a good time to do the properties. So we have CH9 dash 15a material is uh, currently not specified so uh, if we stayed with the plain carbon or 
And if we need to save, oh, we needed the steel, so they were saying the 1020, apply, rev A, the finish. We'll just stay with raw for this. We might do black. Oh, there's one more fillet. So go ahead and pick the dates and apply. And that gives me a chance to find my remaining fillet. And actually, that one doesn't uh, doesn't show up as uh, so as the designer. It is your choice. And since there's a little bit of a gap there, let's go ahead and select. So eight millimeters, and I think probably six millimeters would be a good number. And from the manufacturing. That's probably going to be, yeah, it's probably going to be about uh, about right. And then creating that shape, since this is uh, an assumed machine part that we're not casting this, and at some point I would want to look at the uh, the differences between uh, aluminum and steel as far as our our process goes. All right, so that takes care of. Now let's go ahead and set up our geometry. Our, our, our folders for the geometry. Nope. Let's do a new folder. There we go. And we're going to do P. Well, we'll just call it the, um, the housing. 